It is a hot day in the late Jurassic, as the dry season begins to tighten its grip. Some of the worst affected are the mighty sauropods, such as Diplodocus, one of the longest and largest in the world. These huge herbivores can grow up to 30 meters long, though this takes many years and very few make it this far. A small herd is moving to New Grove to feed their enormous appetite, but this has brought them into the territory of the area's top predators, Allosaurus. The pack of four adults stalks the rear of the herd, looking for young and weak individuals. At up to nine meters long, these predators specialize in hunting large, powerful prey, but even they wouldn't tackle a full-grown Diplodocus, which is why they are being cautious. Their leader has spotted an 18 meter long individual that has multiple previous wounds, likely from other Allosaurus attacks. The large female has waited long enough and begins the attack. They accelerate to top speed, moving to attack the weakened individual that is near the rear of the herd. Approaching from the rear, it took too long for any of the Diplodocus to see them coming in, and when one did call out, his alarm was too late, as the predators were amongst them. The Allosaurus had to duck under the tail of a larger Diplodocus, but then they had a clear shot at their target. The sauropod barely knew they were under attack when the lead female bit into the rear leg and pulled backwards. She couldn't hope to stop the giant, but it would at least slow him down and wound him. The herbivore swung his head around in time to see a large male Allosaurus leap onto his right side, rocking him sideways. The Allosaurus gripped onto the Diplodocus' side with his curved claws and proceeded to bite repeatedly into the victim's back. A smaller male Allosaurus ducked under the sauropod's tail and went around to the left side. He reached up with his head and latched onto his prey's stiff neck with his jaws and then wrapped his arms around the neck in a deadly embrace. The Diplodocus swung its head from side to side, dragging the Allosaurus across the ground, but the predator refused to let go. The carnivore on his back was still biting viciously when suddenly one of the Diplodocus ahead of the pack whipped its tail and slashed it across the large Allosaurus's back with such speed and force the hunter fell off the Diplodocus collapsing to his side. The fourth and final Allosaurus stepped in and bit the tail that had whipped her packmate but she underestimated the strength of a full-grown Diplodocus and when the giant swung its tail the Allosaurus was pulled across the ground, sliding through the dirt till she hit a log. The small male Allosaurus was holding on with everything he had, and continually biting the Diplodocus's neck over and over, creating a large open wound and peeling off chunks of flesh. But even this wasn't enough to slow down the sauropod, and he swung his neck again, throwing the Allosaurus to the ground. The large male and female Allosaurus both moved to the left side of the Diplodocus, and together, leapt onto their prey's side. He could stand up to one Allosaurus, but not two. As both of the hunters crashed into him, the sauropod fell to his side, his ribs breaking under his own weight. In his pained attempts to right himself, the Allosaurus were all over him. The two large individuals bit down and raked their jaws over his underside, trying to avoid his flailing legs. The smaller male he had flung off before had already sprung to his feet and instantly pinned the Diplodocus's head under his foot and clawed at his neck, creating more wounds. The rest of the herd didn't help. Their small brains had few complex behaviours, and when faced with danger, they looked out for themselves. They slowly lumbered away as their younger member was torn open. Sauropods have thick hides and can suffer catastrophic wounds that would kill other dinosaurs. But unable to escape his attackers, the Diplodocus that was already weak from previous attacks slowly succumbed to blood loss and trauma. By the time the massive herbivore died, the whole pack was exhausted. Nevertheless, they instantly began to cut through the outer layer of hide to get to the more nutritious meat underneath. Allosaurus have relatively small teeth for their size, but they are razor sharp and cut through their prey's defenses soon enough allowing the successful pack to gorge themselves. Later, as the sun reaches its peak, the Allosaurus pack is forced to seek shade and rest. They quickly fall asleep with bellies full of sauropod meat. Out of the trees comes a different group of predators, 
The scar-faced Ceratosaurus and her own pack of four stealthily approached the carcass, trying not to awaken the large predators not too far away. When they reached a kill, they quietly began to feed, their larger teeth and shorter snouts able to get at parts of the carcass the Allosaurus can't. If Allosaurus are the lions of the Jurassic, then Ceratosaurus are the hyenas, deadly predators living in the shadow of larger carnivores. There is enough meat on this carcass to feed dozens of predators, and indeed, many different scavengers from dinosaurs to insects will flourish from such a large kill, though all will be wary, for the Allosaurus will guard it for as long as the meat is fresh, so every animal approaches as cautiously as the Ceratosaurus. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the famous lions of the Jurassic, Allosaurus. Allosaurus was originally discovered in 1869 in Middle Park, Colorado, and was ascribed in 1877 by Charles Marsh. Since then, over 100 different specimens have been discovered, with it being associated most commonly with the Morrison Formation, but remains have also been found in Montana, New Mexico, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Utah, Wyoming, and Portugal. Allosaurus is a genus that lived between 155 and 145 million years ago in the late Jurassic. The six species of Allosaurus are the type species Fragilis, Amplus, Atrox, Europrus, Dimadsenae, and Leucasi. However, the legitimacy of some of these species is called into question, and as of 2020, only Fragilis, Europus, and Gimed Semi are considered valid. On a final note, the species Sarophaganax is sometimes considered a larger species of Allosaurus. However, as of now, it is its own species, though closely related to Allosaurus. Fragilis is the most common specimen, so most information in today's episode will be based upon this species. It grew to an average of 8.5 meters long, with large individuals reaching 9.7 meters long, and stood between 3.5 and 4 meters tall. Weight has been highly variable throughout the years, ranging from 700 kilos to 4 tons. Current estimates put it at between 1.4 and 2 tons though this changes between species. The skull of Allosaurus was lightweight but robust, with an average of 16 teeth in the lower and upper jaws. The teeth were short but had saw-like edges designed for easily cutting through flesh. These would have been shed and regrown throughout its life, which is why Allosaurus teeth are so common. It had two horns above the eyes, which likely were covered in keratin when the animal was alive. They may have been used for display, identifying individuals, and my favourite theory, as sunshades, automatically making Allosaurus one of the coolest dinosaurs ever. It could open its jaws up to 92 degrees, giving it a massive gape at the cost of a lower than average bite force, but we'll get into that in a moment. The neck muscles gave the head a powerful forward and back motion, so Allosaurus was likely ripping meat off of carcasses backwards, shearing with its teeth much like a bird of prey, instead of thrashing side to side like it is assumed with T-Rex. It had a typical theropod body, with a strong barrel-like chest and a long, stiff tail for balance. Allosaurus did have gastrilla or belly ribs, but these are rarely found and not usually put on skeleton reconstructions. The skeleton had air sacs in the neck and vertebra, which made the body lighter. Although the forelimbs were only 35% the length of the hind limbs, this is quite large for most theropods, with three long fingers, each tipped with a hook-like claw. These arms were very strong, used to latch onto prey and hold them securely. The claws, with the largest being on the innermost finger, or thumb, would have aided in this, cutting into a victim's flesh and making it harder for them to escape. Thanks to the wealth of fossils found, including different age groups, a lot is known about this species' growth. They may have lived to about 28 years, reaching maturity at 15 years. Juveniles had proportionally longer legs, meaning that they hunted small, fast prey when they were young, and as adults, became stockier, 
and went after larger or tougher prey when they were full grown. During its time, Allosaurus was a common apex predator, with up to 75% of all theropod fossils in the Morrison Formation belonging to Allosaurus. It was clearly a hunter too, as one Allosaurus fossil shows it has a puncture wound on one of its tail vertebra from a Stegosaurus's tail spike that it had survived and healed over. Other evidence includes the stress fractures on the feet of Allosaurus bones. Most fractures on theropods are centered on the middle toe, as this is what bears most of the weight when the animal is walking or running. Allosaurus has fractures on all three toes. These fractures likely occurred from interactions with prey, such as pinning them to the ground with its feet, and their struggles causing the previously mentioned injuries. This is good evidence for Allosaurus being a very active hunter. How it hunted is a bit harder to tell. As mentioned before, they had a rather weak bite force, so for small prey, like Triosaurus, it likely used its arms to hold them in place and then bite vulnerable areas like the neck multiple times to cause bleeding and sever vital organs. For larger prey, like subadult sauropods, Allosaurus may have wrapped its arms around the neck in an odd hug-like attack, and then continually bit wherever it could reach in order to weaken the animal via blood loss, a sort of death via a thousand cuts killing technique. This could have been helped if Allosaurus worked in packs, but there is little evidence for this, which will be covered later. Another theory is that when it comes to sauropods far too large for Allosaurus, that it would have run up and sheared a chunk of flesh off its target and then retreated, the so-called flesh grazer technique. A more criticized theory is the hatchet technique, where Allosaurus would use its incredibly wide gape and then slam its upper jaw down into a target much like a falling axe, causing blunt force trauma as well as bleeding. This has been scrutinized, as no modern animal does this, and there would be just too much risk in hitting the bottom jaw, or just breaking the teeth of the top jaw, amongst others. Though it's common to depict Allosaurus as pack animals, there is little evidence to support this. Of course, they could have had advanced social behavior, such as hunting together or rearing young. A lot of Allosaurus injuries, however, seem to come from other Allosauruses. Bite marks on skulls are fairly common, and may have been from fights or asserting dominance. There is even evidence of cannibalism, with younger Allosauruses being consumed by older individuals. Of course, I can't talk about Allosaurus without mentioning the legendary Big Al, and his appearance in the Walking with Dinosaurs episode, The Ballad of Big Al. A 95% complete skeleton found in 1991 that was 87% fully grown when he died. Al had over 19 different bone breaks and infections, many of which had healed, but they believe that the severely broken and infected toe bones may have finally led to his death. Big Al is a testament to how hard the life of a predator can be, and how tough you had to be in order to survive such a grueling world. Allosaurus shared its environment with other large carnivores such as Ceratosaurus and Torvosaurus. Based on the differing skulls and the size of these carnivores, it's likely each of them occupied their own niche, with Ceratosaurus and Torvosaurus in more forested areas near rivers, while Allosaurus preferred open areas, with it being more compact with longer legs, chasing down prey reaching speeds up to 55 kilometers per hour. So, Allosaurus, one of the most well-known dinosaurs that unfortunately often just gets seen as a T-Rex with longer arms. But as we can see, it's far more than that. A large, fast, and well-equipped hunter that took on some of the most deadly Jurassic giants. Though I don't believe they would have gone for fully grown sauropods like Brachiosaurus or Supersaurus, I do believe they were a large threat to young individuals, and many of the medium and small herbivores they lived alongside, such as Stegosaurus. But what do you think of Allosaurus? What lesser-known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.